What's up everybody? Travis Took here with my good friend, Professor Robbie Rabati. We're here in Pflugerville, Texas at Team Rabati. Uh, we just got done training, Master Worlds Camp 2019. And um, first off, Robbie, congratulations on your second degree. Yes, Black sir. Thank Very you. big deal. Thank you. Um, Thank you. you know, the whole idea behind doing this was uh, that every time I call you or you call me to relay like uh, three minutes worth of information. We end up talking for four hours yes. and it's like a lot of good stuff. Yes. And I always think like, man, we should have we should have recorded that. Yeah. You yeah. know? It's, yeah. A, it's always a great conversation that I would love to share with students and nobody hears it but us. So, <laughs> yes. um, so for today, I have no idea what we're gonna talk about. But I know that uh, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be awesome. And um, let's talk about you for a little bit, oh, and then we'll just kind of go from there. So yes, sir. Um, just tell me a little bit about how's the academy going? I know uh, started from humble beginnings, and yes, now sir. it's probably the biggest, um, you know, like student-wise jiu-jitsu school in the greater Austin area. So oh, yes, sir. Thank how's it going, man? It's, it's going great. It's going great. We just hit our 10-year mark, and... Uh, Things are going awesome. Uh, um, I'm really most stoked. You know, when you when you start your academy, of course, you have these these real big um, dreams and aspirations of competition and meeting these goals and doing these different things. But it's always those really awesome moments of changing people's lives. And it's just like that one 12 year old with lack of self confidence, or um, um, that one person who's never really who's kind of struggled with their weight their entire life now having something in it. So. Um, um, yeah, those are the type of things that mean more to me than even hitting that 10-year mark, the academy's uh, uh, student body size, any of that stuff is just, just making a, a positive impact on people's lives. It's always amazing. Well, uh, it reminds me, because um, we were at uh, Professor Miguel Castro's academy yeah. for his anniversary a while back, and, um, and then I had mine, so a lot of them have kind of come together at the same yeah. time. Yeah. And he actually mentioned something when he was talking to the students. Um, which was kind of was flattering to me but I felt almost guilty because he said like you know he was talking about like oh the sacrifice of you know uh, being the instructor and doing yeah. this and and my thought was that yes it, it is hard work there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes but you know I really wouldn't have it any other way I feel like there's no way to give away more than what you get back. Yeah. If you, I mean, you have to be looking for it. Right. You know what I mean? You have right. to be looking for those opportunities to see how martial arts changes somebody's life. Yeah. Life. Absolutely. But um, yeah, for me, it's it's like that. It's, it's so rewarding, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's and that's really, really how it goes. And I heard something not too long ago. And just to summarize it, because I'm sure I will butcher it, but um, the you know giving and getting back and that 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 whole golden rule of helping out people and stuff um, that really the reward is the actual giving moment that, yeah. that's it you are instantaneously rewarded by that feeling and especially if it comes from the right place and and you really truly want to give that that stuff man you're just instantaneously giving right back I, I get filled with that feeling of of, of this is the best thing I've ever done by helping this one person at this one time, whether it's something very insignificant or something big, whichever it feels all the same. And that's that's the thing. And I'm sure, Coach, you'll, you'll agree that, man, we're, we're lucky enough to you know be pursuing something we absolutely love, share with the world, share our vision, bring people together, all this stuff. But getting those rewards are like, the biggest thing ever. It's just to see someone benefit and grow from it is, is incredible. And it's it's just what makes it all amazing and yeah, worthwhile. So I think that's what you, everything you just said is probably the answer to this question. Mm. So it might, you might just repeat yourself. I'm done. Ask anyway. I'll, I'll, get, I'll get a copy. But, um, <laughs> but like, in, like anything, right? Like, you know, we just say we all have that kind of hedonic treadmill. We, we easily adapt to whatever our new circumstance yeah. is, no matter no matter how good it might be. Yeah, yeah. So, although you know you're doing what you love, what do you do as time goes on? Mm -hmm. You have a, a great big academy, a lot of students, um, but a lot of what we have to do is still routine, yeah. right? You have to get up, you have to do the marketing, you have to yeah. do plan classes, train your coaches, your staff. Yeah. How do you stay motivated? Because motivation doesn't just it doesn't keep you on a high, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. what are some of the things that you do consistently to make sure that you don't fall 
into uh, that trap of um, you know things just kind of leveling off yeah, and not yeah, feeling yeah. exciting about absolutely, it. Absolutely, right? yeah. That that lull factor, those you know, you know, in relationships they call them seven year itches and things like that, and yeah. that that's definitely there. I mean, because you know, like like you said, you get so used to everything being awesome all the time, so our brain naturally gravitates we get to the yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh man, I you know I. I have to count how many students attended class. Oh man, and, right. and so it's like these these, these weird first world problems. the first world first world gym problems. Yeah. Um, but absolutely, and, and and the answer is 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 big part of what I said earlier about the reward of giving um, and how how great that is and how much that the ripple effect of that can go into someone's life and, and I still hear from people from who are former students of five years ago who just coach I saw this and I was thinking about you and the, this help and that thing and lucky enough and man just want to say thank you again and out of the blue and those are incredible moments but I think the other thing and this is actually kind of an interesting subject and kind of a bit of what happens when me and Travis start talking is that the discipline part of it is that um, so just to rewind back, so I started pretty young in jujitsu, you know, not by modern terms, and people start, but two young, and a half. two, two and a half, uh, but I started at 18, and so my big thing that I learned from martial arts early on was to discipline my emotions, mm -hmm. and Coach is a great friend of mine and knows I'm a man of passion, and I believe in what I believe, and, you know, uh, getting angry sometimes is a part of it, but started training and had to discipline my emotions and feelings and put them in their proper context and not think just because you feel something doesn't make it real. Yeah. I could feel like it's going to rain today, but it doesn't mean it's going to rain. That, that doesn't yeah. mean anything. Instead, live in a more balanced space. And so of that, that was one of the things I had to work on the most. So really stifling some of those feelings of everything has to feel like uh, rainbows and sunshine and a level 10 every single day instead being disciplined around a level 7 all the time like the great Mark Manson said yeah. uh, that <laughs> life is mostly done at a, it's at a level 7 and uh, you know pretty great and all that uh, that you stay disciplined and, and, and both content and find your satisfaction inside of it and not look, not ride the ups and downs because they're they're going to come and go and you're going to have amazing highs and incredible moments at UFCs in Australia and then you're going to have yeah. low moments that nobody ever sees where you're just like huh. you're fighting the tears and no one's watching right right <laughs> right, right yeah. absolutely but um, yeah so I, th I think if, if obviously like the, the, the two part answer um, through all my rambling is the um, uh, obviously the reward of, of being being uh, routine and, and, and finding meaning and purpose behind it all but then also your discipline and, and finding that discipline I get, I get a massive reward out of feeling like I control that emotional monster that sometimes wants to come out and just say oh I don't feel good and yeah. then you know everyone should bend around that feeling it's like no you don't deserve to do that for anyone and nobody deserves to do that to you and how, how do you like it when those things have happened to you and so it's, it's that stuff and I, and I take great personal satisfaction of having that mostly under control yeah well, no Except one with it. pop musicians. You, you, I think you wouldn't be human. <laughs> yeah. um, you wouldn't be human if you didn't, if you didn't have uh, moments of emotional weakness. You know what I mean? If, yeah, you, if yeah. you're actually that stoic, yeah. you probably wouldn't be very good with people. No. Because we, what we do is a very personal thing. Yeah. It's personal interaction with people. Yeah. yeah. And and a lot of our students, like we've talked about this, we don't. We don't know always the reason why someone enrolls into martial arts until months or even years after mm -hmm. when you've con created enough of a bond that they're comfortable enough to share. Yeah. Like, hey, let me let me tell you why Absolutely. I'm actually doing this. And a lot of times it's um, uh, it can be a divorce, a, some midlife trauma, it can be overcoming, you know. Um, self confidence, lack of self confidence. Like, yeah, a million and one things, and and rarely is it that I really want to learn jujitsu moves. Yes. You know, they yes. might be drawn, yes. like, I was drawn to the, the technical the aspect yeah. of it, but that's not why I did it for forever. That's why I started.